if your Catholic church was closing or your parish was merging. Many parishioners in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati think there's nothing they can do to stop it. But four parishes in Ohio are fighting back, and they've taken their case all the way to the Vatican. The WCPO 9i team is taking a look at the growing pushback to the Archdiocese restructuring plan called Beacons of Light. And tonight in part two of the series, you'll hear what you can do if your parish is threatened to close. Anybody in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati that would like help, they can contact me. Mark Pettis is procurator or chief advocate for all local Catholics to fight parish closures. I'll be more than happy to come down to your first meeting to try to explain to people what exactly it means, what they need to do. The Archdiocese of Cincinnati has announced several changes in the past year and a half. Seven parishes merging, two churches closing, and four Catholic schools shutting their doors for good. But that's just the beginning. Once the parish is gone, they can do anything they want with the church. Pettis says parishioners shouldn't feel helpless. Canon Law says they have a right and a duty to oppose a merger if they don't think it's fair. It's all legal. There's no reason to feel like you're doing something against them. Pettis says it's crucial for parishioners to gather documents now about their parish's finances, membership, sacraments, buildings, and property before the Archdiocese signs a decree. So when the decrees are issued that there's going to be closures, mergers, um, it's a very short time period. Kelly O'Donnell has been a canon lawyer for 35 years. While it is rare for the Vatican to accept an appeal, she says it seems more common now because parishioners are better prepared. Parishioners are more savvy these days and with social media, they start preparing early. Canon lawyer Philip Gray is working with Pettis to help Archdiocese of Cincinnati parishioners with a possible solution. He is also helping St. Louis Catholics. Earlier this month, in a rare move, the Vatican sided with St. Louis parishioners, ruling that one parish should be kept open because it's large enough and has enough young parishioners to be a viable community. But if the population is able to support it financially, the financials really tell a big story. In a statement to the WCPO 9i team, an archdiocese spokesperson says in part, canon law requires the existence of just cause in order to establish, suppress, or notably alter a parish. But Chris Niekamp thinks the Archdiocese is withholding information about its plan to minimize pushback. He's the founder of the Save Our Steeples group. I've had a priest that basically said, well, you got to understand, uh, the people just aren't ready to hear it yet. And I was disappointed in that. I'm like, no, the people need to know what's coming. Two of the six reasons the Archdiocese listed in this decree to merge several parishes near Sydney, Ohio, are to reduce burdens on clergy and staff members and for better utilization of clergy and lay personnel. But Pettis says a shortage of priests or priestly fatigue are not valid reasons under canon law. I worked in uh, two different foundries for over 50 years <clears throat> working in a foundry. A lot of times I was fatigued, but I kept going back to work. In a letter to local Catholics in 2021, Archbishop Dennis Schnur says restructuring is necessary because church buildings are grossly underutilized, priests and parish staff members are stretched to the limit, and our parishes are simply not the vibrant, evangelizing communities that Catholics want and need. But that's not how Pettis sees it. The supreme law of the church is salvation of souls. So I don't see how closing any parish helps save souls. St. Margaret St. John Church here in Madisonville is for sale. Since its last mass in 2022, some parishioners I spoke with are now attending Catholic Church nearby. But others are still upset about the loss of their church and are not attending Mass at all. Paula Christian, WCPO 9, I-Team. For a detailed look at all of the closures and mergers, you can go to I-Team reporter Dan Monk's story on WCPO.com.